I do want to um, point out a, one other thing, though, in this in the small print. I think it the case that there are many pathologists on that committee. They say, but if you don't do it, you miss some important prognostic information on the presence of fibrosis. Of course, I don't know what to do with that prognostic information, so that doesn't sway me one way or the other. How about you? It's a really good point because the patients uh, always worry about the long-term outcome of the disease. By default, we say it's a benign, but there is a proportion of the patients, about 20, 25% of the patients that over lifespan may progress to myelofibrosis and certain small percentage to acute myeloleukemia. But myelofibrosis in particular is the worry because when you transform officially, the life expectancy becomes shorter. And so the bone marrow biopsy can pro provide uh, some useful information to semi-intelligently prognosticate for a future, right? Uh, this is all relative, but if you have a cytogenetic abnormality, abnormality in chromosomes, which is very rare, but not um, that it's impossible, that would perhaps predispose people to have a higher risk of change. And the presence of fibrosis already at the time of diagnosis of PV, which is present in up to 20% of the cases on a scale from zero to three, grade two, is already seen in up to 20% of patients. I repeat because it's important. These patients with PV are at a high risk of a change to full-blown myelofibrosis during their lifespan. So this is kind of information that we would like to have at the beginning for full understanding, not only about diagnosis, but possible prognosis for transformation, not for the thrombotic risk, which I already mentioned as a primary goal of the therapy, but for the future, right? And I think that needs to be actually highlighted that presence of the fibrosis already does not mean malfibrosis by default. Fibrosis at a certain degree can be seen in PV. Thanks, Serge. Ru Ruben, do you want to add to that? Sure, I, I just wanted to add an important point that I share with patients is that, you know, I definitely agree, you know, that baseline bone marrow biopsy is helpful. Uh, the challenge is if we see a bit of fibrosis and they have that higher risk, we still don't really know what that means in absolute terms. You know, so if I compare two patients, you know, one without that fibrosis, one with, yes, the one that has a fibrosis has a higher likelihood of progression to myelofibrosis, but that might be in 10 years. You know, that might be compared to the other patient that will never progress during their lifespan. Uh, it, so as we think about these prognostic factors, it is worse as a population, but it's always difficult to translate that for a patient, what that means. Uh, additionally, all of that is in current science. We may well develop therapies or some of our current therapies might alter that natural history further. So prognostic, but always has to be taken uh, in appropriate consideration and that sometimes patients become very distressed by some of these uh, prognostic findings as well. Jamil, would you like to add? Yeah, you know, uh, as everybody said, the bone marrow biopsy may or may not be uh, important. I think um, the one piece I wanted to add in PV uh, is that in patients who may not meet the criteria, like let's say you have a JAK V670 NF positivity and you're entertaining an MPN, and perhaps the hemoglobin isn't 16.5, isn't 16, isn't 18.5, where you actually don't have to do a marrow, but perhaps 13. But if you did the bone marrow and then you have an, uh, you did an iron stain, which I highly recommend on everybody who has a marrow with the suspicion of an MPN that has zero iron in it. If you have absent iron stores, then I think your patient clearly is iron deficient and may actually have PV, even though the hemoglobin doesn't necessarily meet criteria. So I think in that sense, when the heme parameters do not fit the WHO 2016, as opposed to 2017, as it says in the NCCN guidelines, um, it has to be performed so that you can characterize that MPM a little bit better and pay attention to the iron piece, which I, I often see it done, yet nobody comments on it. And I think we could improve a lot on the prognostic accuracy of the uh, characteristics of the MPN we're looking for. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, the iron stain can be very helpful in those borderline cases. And I often look for iron deficiency.